Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. Look for me. You can look for me. Look for me. You can look for me. But don't call the road till I get there. I may be blind. I may be blind. May not can see. I cannot see. But you can look for me. You can look for me. But don't call the road till I get there. I may never, never, ever walk again. I cannot walk. But you can look for me. You can look for me. Look for me. You can look for me. Keep it right there. Look for me. You can look for me. Look for me. You can look for me. One of these old mornings. You can look for me. Won't be very long. You can look for me. You gonna look for me. You can look for me. I'll be gone on home. You can look for me. Going up in glory. You can look for me. I'm gonna sing and shout. You can look for me. There won't be nobody. You can look for me. That can put me out. You can look for me. Look for me. You can look for me. Look for me. You can look for me. Look for me. You can look for me. But don't call the road till I get there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I may be sick. I may be sick. I may not never, ever, ever get well. Can I well? But you can look for me. You can look for me. Look for me. You can look for me. Oh, look for me. You can look for me. I want to see his face. You can look for me. Touch his nail scarred hand. You can look for me. Talking about Jesus. You can look for me. Talking about Jesus. You can look for me, the one that died for me. You can look for me, hung bled on Calvary. You can look for me, look for me. You can look for me, look for me. You can look for me, look for me. You can look for me, but don't call the road till I get there. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. One for the Father, God, and the precious Holy Ghost. Is anybody glad to be here this morning? Let's give God a great big hand of praise. Come on now, let's give God a great big hand of praise. Because God has truly been good to us this morning. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but we had an awesome Bible study this morning. And, and, and Sunday school, I'm sorry. Bible study, Sunday school. But what I was thinking about a, a moment ago is that, you know, first of all, our pastor's not here today, but we're going to uplift the name of Jesus Christ in high, amen? So we want to pray for our pastor and his first lady. You know, he, he needed a couple days off because he's been really toiling for the Lord, amen? amen. So we're going to continue to uplift the mighty name of Jesus because God has truly been good, amen? amen. You know, uh, this morning, uh, I was talking to uh, 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 Pastor Sean this morning, and we was in the back, and he, he said a prayer, and he was talking about how the birds was chirping this morning. The birds was was singing. Just think about that. I don't know about you, but when you laid down last night and God touched you and allowed you to get up early this morning, I'm talking about he touched you with a finger of love. Yes, and I don't know about you, but last night somebody, I, I know all y'all doors may have been locked, but somewhere, somewhere, 
somebody had left their keys in their door. But the enemy, but God kept the enemy away. And so when I woke up this morning, I thought about what Son said. I was excited because God did it all by himself. I said, God did it all by himself. I said, God did it all by himself. And for this, I just want to give him just a little bit of praise and glory. You know, I was thinking about an old song we used to sing, and it, it goes a little bit like this. I know I am a, a child of God. I tricks in my mind, you know, to, but when I look back on what I've already been through, and and I see what God has me right now, yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe that everything's going to be all right. I want to tell y'all that sometimes it's not meant for us to see things. You know, you know, I go to bed worried about this and that. It's just not meant for me to see the way out. But I do know who the way out is. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I I just have to I just have to stay focused on God. Yeah. You know, and, and I encourage anybody and everybody that no matter what the problem is, how hard it seems, look where you've been. Yes, look what God has already brought you through. Amen. And that all to tell you that if he did it then. He'll do it now. Yes, see, God didn't bring us right here for nothing. You see what I'm saying? He don't change his mind as we go along. Bless him, bless him. And I thank God for that. So I just ask y'all to help us this morning as we try to sing this song. I'm still here. Heartache. I had my share of heartache. But I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Trouble, I've seen my share of trouble, but I'm still bruises. I've taken my lumps and bruises, but I'm still. 
I've been lied on, but I'm still here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Burdens I had to bear, so many burdens, but I'm still here. Ooh, oh. dark day. I had my share of dark day. I'm still here, yes I am, disappointments, I had so many disappointments, but I'm still here, listen, Church say amen. Let the church say amen again. He said, I made it. I made it. I made it. And I'm still here. He said, I made it. I made it. I made it. I'm still here. Somebody didn't catch it. He said, I made it. I made it. I made it. I'm still here. Trials and tribulations, I made it, but I'm still here. Ups and downs, but I'm still here. Trials of my life. But I'm still here. Friends may talk about you, but I'm still here. Jobs may come and go, but I'm still here. Friends walk off and leave you, 
but I'm still here. Somebody didn't catch it. I said, I'm still here. I mean, I'm still here. Lay down last night and he woke me early this morning. I'm, I'm still here. Oh, man, somebody catch that. I'm still here. See, the devil tried to count you out. See, the devil tried to count you out, but you still here. See, somebody been through breast cancer, but I'm still here. Somebody had colon cancer, but I'm still here. Somebody had high blood pressure, but I'm still here. Somebody can't run the way they used to run, but I'm still here. Somebody might can't see the way they used to see, but I'm still here. You might not have as much hair as you had last year, but I'm still here. See somebody catch up. I'm gonna leave y'all alone, cause see y'all, y'all, y'all gonna get me upset. God has been good. We, we want to thank that choir for that great big, those mayor choir for the, that selection. And now we want to have an altar call by Reverend Billy Walker. So if you people will please stand. You don't have to come to the altar. You may be able to stand where you are. But if you if you stand, and, and we're about to pray because the Bible says that God's house is a house of prayer. Right. Now you're in the hands of Reverend Walker. I'm still here. Anybody that knows me knows the power in that song. That's my song right there. I love it. There is power in that song. There's power in prayer this morning. I want to ask if anybody has any special prayer requests this morning. Just, just raise your hand. The Johnson family, Parker family, Gibson family. I see you, Kathy. Franklin family. The Green family. Say that again. Alexander family. Williams family. Duncan's family. The Cross family. The Jackson family from me. Uh, the Walker family. The Mahomes. Who you say? The Howe family. The reason I ask for y'all to acknowledge that is because God wants you to personally say it. He knows it. But it's something about when you confess with your mouth. That's when God shows up and shows out. And I'm going to show you two examples of the power of prayer. Three examples. I'm going to use myself. I'm four or five. Uh, Reverend Johnson. Reverend Cross. Me personally. Our congregation. Uh, but the greatest power of prayer that I'm going to share with y'all is for anybody that has been coming here lately. That we... Uh, well, without a musician, and we prayed and prayed yeah. for a musician. And in God's own time, He sent us one. Let's give our musician. I'm not leaving y'all back there, DJ, because DJ stuck with us the whole time. Let's give DJ our hand. Y'all, prayer is so important. Uh, it's just like our cell phones, how we reach to talk to our loved ones. And I want to share with you that God is always available. All we have to do is call on him. And the same way we text our loved ones, if it's something that we're dealing with, pick up our Bibles and go to that text. And let them use it. I'm going to let you know that prayer is something that meets you in the future through faith. I'm going to say that again. Prayer will meet you in the future through faith. I'm going to say it one more time. Prayer is something that will meet you in the future through faith. We got to believe. Because if you pray and don't believe, then don't pray. I'm going to say that again. If you pray and don't believe, don't pray. But if you pray and believe, it will meet you in the future. I just, I'm just so happy this morning, y'all. I'm just happy. Um, I want to thank our pastor for entrusting us this morning with his house. Uh, my father always tells me that anytime somebody does something for you, tell them thank you, because ain't nobody got to do nothing for you. But I'm going to go ahead and pray this morning. Whatever you're dealing with, I want you to push pause on it right now and just close your eyes and don't focus on the problem, but focus on the problem solver. 
Oh, Heavenly Father, we come right now, Lord, first of all, to tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching us with your finger of love this morning, Lord. And behold, our eyes came open, Lord, and we've seen a brand new day, a day that we'll never see again, Lord. And we just tell you, thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, this morning that when you touched us, you touched our bodies, Lord. And you gave us the activities of our limbs this morning, Lord. And we said, thank you, Lord. Not only did you touch us, you touched our mind, our body. Lord, we just tell you to just thank you, Lord, for touching our loved ones this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for dispersing your angels around the four posts of our homes, the four posts of our beds, Lord. Lord, we just thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, when we got up this morning, Lord, things were just the way we left them when we went to sleep last night, Lord. And we tell you, thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that when we looked in the refrigerator, Lord, Lord, it was food to eat this morning, Lord. And we thank you this morning, Lord. We went and went to our closets, Lord. Lord, we had ramens to put on our back, Lord. And we tell you, thank you this morning, Lord. When we went outside, Lord, we had a vehicle, Lord, Lord, to, to travel to your house of worship, Lord. And we tell you, thank you, Lord. Lord, on our way, Lord, you gave us traveling grace to get here, Lord. Lord, and we tell you, thank you this morning, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for aiding us to see another holiday this morning, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for food on our tables, Lord. We just thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for touching our family and our loved ones, Lord. We just thank you for bringing us together one more time, Lord. Lord, I ask right now, Lord, that you go outside of this building, Lord. Touch those which are lost this morning, Lord. Lord, go up and down the streets, Lord. Those that are begging and on corners and on the bridge, Lord, touch this morning, Lord. Lord, go into the jail cells this morning, Lord, and touch this morning, Lord. Don't stop right there, Lord, but go by the nursing home this morning, Lord, and, and touch right now this morning, Lord. Lord, stop by the hospitals, Lord, and touch this morning, Lord. Lord, touch minds, Lord. Touch bodies, Lord. Lord, touch those this morning, Lord, that are, are suffering, Lord, from pains in their bodies, Lord. Lord, touch those that are suffering with dementia and all timers and high blood pressure this morning, Lord. Just touch right now, Lord. Lord, just touch in Jesus' name this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for failure, because not all failure, Lord, is failure, Lord, but it's a chance to, Lord, put you first, Lord, and we just thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch this morning, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, just give it to God this morning, Lord. Whatever you're wrestling with this morning, give it to God this morning. Whatever you're struggling with this morning, just give it to God. And in due season, you shall reap if you faint not, Lord. We just pray this prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name this morning, Lord. Amen. Sometimes 
sometimes sing it with you in my oh, 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 on my way home. Oh, oh Lord. Fixing Jesus, yeah, fixing yeah. like you said you were. Friend, get a few sometimes. Oh,
you have any announcements that you would like to be made, na- made known at the church? We have these forms at the secretary's door and also out in the lobby that you can fill these out and p- give them to her, and we'll make sure that the announcements get made. Okay, reminder. Intercessory prayer is Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m. in person. Sunday school is Sundays at 9 a.m. online and in person. Morning worship is on Sunday at 10 a.m. online and in person. And Bible studies on Wednesday night at 6 6 p.m. online. At this time, do you have any visitors that would like to stand and give your home church these visitors? We have visitors, but evidently they don't feel like visitors. They feel like they're at home, and that's a good thing. We're glad to have y'all this morning. Amen. Okay. Let us remember the sick, the hospitalized, the shut-in, the oppressed, the homeless, incarcerated, and those who are less fortunate than us. Let us remember them in visitation, financial giving, but most of all, remember them in our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Parker. Uh, I only know of one point of emphasis, and I'm not sure of the date, so maybe somebody can help me out. When is the Christmas celebration? Anybody know that date? That's coming up. December 17th? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, just get ready. Just just get ready, because we're going to have something. Yeah, get ready. Be ready. See, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Um. Can anybody think of anything that we're missing that I don't know? Okay. Well, we're good to see y'all this morning. It's good to see y'all this morning. It's good to see you this morning. Now, since y'all not up here singing with us, we want y'all to participate. We don't want want to leave you out. So what we're going to do, we're going to give you an opportunity to show God how thankful you are for what he has blessed you with. Yeah, so uh, like the pastor always asks, how many are happy to have something to give? That's right. I know I, I, I learned that if you always have had something to give, it doesn't really mean anything to you. But when you haven't had it and God blesses you with it, it ought to make you want to go bless somebody else. So we're not... Uh, Ursus, you are in charge. Usher, you're in charge. It's time for giving. God has been good to us. He has provided for us all week long. Taking care of us. Made a way out of no way for some people. Well, y'all please stand up. I do. What time is it? Face the wall. I have never been an usher. What time is it? It's giving time. Start from the God gave yeah, his son, you. his son gave his life, that we may have a right to the tree of life. God gave so much, and he asked us for so little. That's a dime. Good to out see of Reverend house. Wilson in the house. So won't you give? Won't you be obedient to Good the to word? See. Brother Brian Wilson in he said in his word, if you give the way he asked you to hey, give, he will open up the doors of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Now, if you wish to give to this great ministry, simply download the Givelify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create your account. In the place of worship, Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Givelify app, you can mail all your tithes, offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon, Missionary Baptist Church, 2823, Amen. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization 
All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time. Good morning, Greater Rose. Deacon Duffy. Give your best. This is uh, maybe the second time we've sung this song. And we want to sing this song. The last time we sung it, my brother, was, uncle, was sitting right over there. He, Deacon Morris. So we want to remember, we don't want to forget Deacon Morris. We want to remember Deacon Morris. And we want to sing this song to try to represent him as best as we can. The name of the song says, I just wave my hand. Have you ever been in a place where you really didn't have the words Come on. to express how you felt? Yes, sir. Maybe God has, had done something that just blew your mind. And you couldn't find the words to say what you wanted to say. But all you could do was just wave your hand. So y'all pray with us as we try to sing this song. been so good to me. I'll just wave my hand. I remember, can I talk to y'all for a minute? I'll just 2006, 2007, 
was a rough year for me. Y'all stay right there. Stay right there. And I honestly thought I was going to lose my mind. I lost my little cousin, my first cousin. I lost my family. I lost my job. I lost my dog died. It was so much going on. But it then the scripture came to me, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, what did Isaiah, Isaiah 26 and 3 say? So what I did, I had to, I couldn't focus on my problems. I had to focus on the problem solved. See, I had to keep my mind stayed on Jesus. How many of you know Jesus will keep your mind? Oh, God is so good to me. Now, even though I lost some things, how many of you know in order to get something new, you're going to have to let some old stuff go? Thank you, Lord. God gave me a, a new job. God gave me a, a new family. I could have lost my mind, y'all. So that's why when I think about the goodness of God, the goodness of Jesus, how he kept my mind. All I can do is just wave my hand. Preaching time. It's preaching time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, you don't know like I know. Thank you. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do because this is a Bible teaching and preaching church. We want you to have your Bibles because we don't want you to just take everything that we say. Yeah. yeah. For granted, we want you to be able to follow us in the Word of God so you can see for yourself. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved, thyself approved. So we're not going to tell you nothing wrong, but we still want you to see it for yourself and read it for yourself. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me. Go to the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the book is Psalms. The number is 100. Yeah. The verses are 1 through 5. That's the entire 100 number of Psalms. Last week, Pastor Cross reminded us to not, not, to, not to forget to say thank you. Yeah. Don't forget to say thank you. Psalm 100. I'm going to read it in its, in its entirety. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, yeah. all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. Yeah. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. 
Verse 5 says, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. This morning, if you would uh, just give me a few minutes, give me a few prayers, I would like to talk about a thankful praise. A thankful praise. With so much going on, um, it's understandable why some have a difficult time offering God a praise of thanks. Wars and rumors of wars. As of last night, there have been nearly 100 people that have died in Somalia because of flooding. Crime is at its all-time high. Not just in America, but right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Personal life changes, excuse me, personal life challenges also make it difficult sometimes to give God a thankful praise. So how can we, personal life challenges, personal life challenges, bills, sometimes you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Unemployment. Health issues. Death of family members, especially now during the holiday season. Somebody that was at the table last year may not be at the table this year. That can be hard on somebody. Failed relationships, depression, all these things can contribute to not being able to give God a thankful praise. See, life also offers so many distractions. Life offers so many distractions, y'all. How can we still offer God a thankful praise while we're going through and dealing with so much? Well, first of all, we have to truly know who God is. Then you have to know that you belong to him. Then we also have to remember how he took care of us when all other ways were exhausted. See, the devil wants you to take your eyes away from Jesus. Take, he wants you to take your eyes off Jesus. He wants you to focus on a problem. He wants you to focus on a storm. See, that's a trick of the devil. Because, see, the devil knows if you take your eyes off Jesus during the storm, you're going to sink. Don't let the devil trick you. Minister Walker told us this morning, I say it all the time, don't focus so much on the problem. Instead, focus on the problem solver. We should not let outside influences dictate how we praise God in here. Whatever's going on, whatever weight that's weighing you down, bring it here and leave it at the altar. See, our feelings dictate how we praise a lot. See, that, that dictates how we praise. But I've told you before, your feelings should never control your faith. But your faith should control your feelings. So no matter what you have going on out there, don't let what's going on out there hinder you from giving God that total thankful praise that he so deserves. Let's go to the scripture, Psalm 100, verse 1. It reads, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. The original Hebrew phrase, make a joyful noise, is a single word meaning to shout or utter a sudden loud cry. So when somebody is in here and, and, and the spirit is moving and they holler, oh, glory. When they say, oh, Somebody might look at them like they're crazy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But actually, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, a lot of times we think a joyful noise means just singing. Yes, sir. Mm -mm, it doesn't just mean singing. It's a, it's a shout mm -hmm. or a sudden loud cry, yes, sir. Yes, sir. a celebratory cry. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say that all ye lands. Mm -hmm. That means 
everybody. Jews, Gentiles, blacks, whites, crackheads, alcoholics, dope fiends, everybody. Clan member, everybody. So we got to get out that out of that 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 box that we're in. You know, a lot of times we just want to we just want to deal with people that look like us and smell like us and dress like us and act like us. But the truth of the matter is, the gospel is for everybody. So in this psalm, David is, is, is petitioning everybody to make a joyful noise. Then he's saying, of course, all ye lands. Verse 2 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Somebody say they sing too much over there at that church. I'm not talking about our church. I'm just saying people. They sing too much. They always singing over there. They, well, verse 2. We should gladly serve the Lord. Gladly. Right there. Serve the Lord with gladness. That means if you're an usher, usher with gladness. If you're a preacher, preach with gladness. If you're a choir member, sing with gladness. If you are a greeter at the door, greet, the, greet with gladness. See, we should not we should not serve the Lord grudgingly. We don't want to serve the Lord. We want to serve the Lord with gladness. We want to be happy about what we're doing. We want to be happy. Verse 3 says, oh, I want to talk more about singing real quick. Singing. Singing is necessary um, because singing can uplift somebody's heart. Somebody can come in this come in these doors and de depressed, down and out, and we can the choir, the male chorus can sing a song, a biblical song, a, a biblical song, not just any old song, but can sing a song. You know that's what psalm means, song, right? So the choir can sing a song that can make put a smile on someone's face. Also, another thing about singing. Singing can set you free. What are you talking about, Campbell? You remember when Paul and Silas was in prison? Now, I've been to jail a few times, maybe twice. I'm not saying twice. But I wasn't in there singing. I didn't have a song in my heart. I was worried about what my mama going to do, what she going to say, how am I going to get out of here. But Paul and Silas just said that at midnight, they got to singing. And all of a sudden, the chains fell off. They were singing and praising God. Because they were singing and praising God, they got delivered. Songs are very important. Singing is very important. As a matter of fact, this is not a request. This is not a request. It doesn't say, it doesn't say, if you don't mind, enter this, enter with singing. Come in for his presence with singing. It doesn't say, if you feel like it, come into his presence with singing. It doesn't say, if you want to, <laughs> come into his presence with singing. It just simply says, come before his presence with singing. This is a command. This is, this is not a questionable request. If you, if you remember in Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Colossians verse, chapter 3, verse 16, it reads, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. 
We're supposed to do that. If you go to Ephesians, excuse me, go to Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 18 through 19, it reads, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Now, somebody might say, well, I can't sing that well, and I don't, I don't understand melody. I, I, I don't know how to sing melody. Well, that's not, that's not talking about hitting a perfect note. That's not what that's talking about. What it's talking about is if you truly believe and are trying to live what you're singing about, it's going to sound good to God. See, somebody may not have taken voice lessons. They don't know how to hit the runs. But they're singing from their heart. And they mean what they're saying. They're, it's, it's real. You see what I'm saying? It's real. It's not a show. It's not a performance. It's real. God hears that. And to God, I'm sure that if your heart is lined up in, with what you're singing about, if you truly believe in what you're singing about, I just can't help but believe that that sounds great. Yes, yes, to God, that sounds perfect. Yes, so don't downplay singing in the church. Don't downplay singing in the church. It's very important. Let's go ahead and go to verse 3. Go ahead and go, ahead and go to verse 3. Verse 3 reads, Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep in his pasture. So the question I have for you, do you know him? Do you know that the Lord is God? See, somebody, they might believe in God, but they may not believe in Jesus Christ. You got to know who God is. See, some of us know of God, but you don't really know God. When you get to know God, when you get to see how he operates, when you get to see how he moves, how he blesses, how he blocks, how he opens doors and closes doors, that ought to make it easier for you to give a thankful praise. We're talking about a thankful praise this morning. How can you truly praise him if you really don't know him? You'll just be going off of what somebody else said. See, you can't go by what Big Mama said and what Mama said and what Daddy. You got to know for yourself. What do I need to know? First of all, you need to know that he's God. You also need to know that he's Jesus Christ. You also need to know that he is the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's called a triune. He's, he's, he's three people in one. You got to know that. You also have to know, so I don't want to wait till the, I don't like waiting till the end anymore. You, you also have to know that he died for our sins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, how did he die? How did God die for us? He gave his only begotten son, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ, he, he who was without sin, put it on, put on our sin, my sin. He put the weight of the world on his shoulder. And then you also have to know not only that he, he, he died, yes, he did die, but you also have to know, you have to believe, you have to understand that it was on the third day morning that he got up with all power in his hand. For me and for you. So if you can believe that, that God is God and he is Jesus and he is, he is the Holy Spirit, if you can believe that, that he came down in the flesh through his son, Jesus Christ, and died on the old, old rugged cross. If you can believe that he did die, but on the third day morning, he got it with all power in his hand, that ought to give you a reason to give God a thankful praise. You got to know that he made us. I thank God I didn't make myself. Because a lot of the things that I may make, may turn up to out being a mess. Uh -huh. yes, sir. But God doesn't make mess. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Now, we can make a mess of certain situations, but God doesn't make mess. He made us. Since he made us, that means he knows everything about us. Since he made us, he knows before we get sick, how to heal us when we get sick. Uh, he knows what you're going to say before you say it. He knows what you're going to do before you do it. Because he made us. Um, anytime something is broken, most of the time you get a warranty. I got that, uh, what was that, 2019, uh, what is that, Impala outside. I got a warranty with it. That warranty states that if something goes wrong with it, I can take it back to the maker. Why I take it back to the maker? Because the maker made it. The maker knows all about that car. If I try to work on that car, I'm going to make a mess. I'm so glad God made me. I may not be all I should be, but oh my God, I am not what I used to be. Thank you, Lord. Well, since he made us, that means that we belong to him. That's what the scripture says, right? It says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Let me stop right there to say, for all you people that, are, that claim that you did it all by yourself, you came up by your own bootstraps, you didn't need no help, I don't know what to tell you. God, in his infinite wisdom, he knew. You know the creator knows about his creation. It's his creation. We belong to him. Not only do we belong to him, but the Bible says right here in, this, in, in, in verse 3, that we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So what that lets me know is I'm in the family. I'm, God, I'm one of God's people. Also, since I am a, you got to understand that we are sheep in his pastor. You understand that sheep are not very intelligent, right? You do know that, right? And I don't even, since they're not intelligent, I don't even think they know that they're not intelligent. Because they're sheep. Some, some people even say that sheep are dumb. Well, that lets me know that sheep need a shepherd. Need a shepherd. Yeah, need a shepherd. See, what that shepherd, the shepherd's job is to protect the sheep. Protect the sheep. When the sheep get to going in the wrong direction, that, sh that shepherd takes his staff and he corrects those sheep to get them back where they're supposed to be. Whenever uh, there's danger, whenever a, a, a bear, a, a lion, or a tiger, or whatever uh, attacks the sheep, the shepherd protects the sheep. What I'm trying to say is, if you're spending all your time protecting yourself, Trusting in yourself, uh, having too much confidence in yourself. It's okay to have confidence in yourself. But I think the Bible says we're not supposed to think high, more highly than what we are. God takes care of his people and the sheep in his pasture. Now, it's just not anybody's pasture. It says in his pastor. So if I find myself in somebody else's pastor where the grass looks a little bit more greener, I'm going to be in trouble. What I'm trying to say is sometimes sheep wander astray. Sometimes we wander astray. Sometimes we end up in places that we should not be. But since God, since Jesus Christ is the good shepherd, he'll come see about even if it's just one. So if you're going to be in anybody's pasture, be in God's pasture. 
Verse 4, moving along, verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Before we can come inside this temple, we should already be thankful and praising him. See, if you only worship and praise God on Sunday morning during church service, since most of us don't come to Bible study, most of us don't uh, watch Bible study, most of us don't come to Sunday school, most of us don't come to uh, other prayer meeting, the only time you praise and worship God is one day a week for two hours. One day a week for two hours. So you got to practice your praise. You got to work on that thing. You see what I'm saying? You, you, see, if you practice on your praise, by the time you, we're going to call the parking lot the gates. By the time you pull in the parking lot, then we're going to call the vestibule the, uh, the porch. The, uh, the temple had three sections. They had the gates, the courtyard, and then inside the, the holy of holy holies. Don't wait till you get in here to practice on your hallelujahs. Choir, don't wait till you get in here to practice on that song that JC gave you a week ago. Deacon, don't wait till you get in here to start praying. Preacher, don't wait till you get in here to study your word. You got to practice on your praise. See, I know uh, they used to say practice makes perfect, but I don't agree with that because you could be practicing something, practicing something the wrong way. So it's not going to bring perfection. But I don't really believe, well, there is one way, one way that we should not worship and praise. The Bible says God is a spirit, and they that worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth. Some of us want to come in here the wrong way. We want to come in here, we want to worship God in the flesh and in a lie. That's not how you worship God. We're supposed to worship God in spirit and in truth. Before we come inside this temple, we should already be thankful and praising him. Praising, I told you to practice your praise. You can practice praising him at home, at work, in school. You can praise him in the car. You can praise him when you're up. You can praise him when you're down. You can praise him when you're well. You can praise him when you're sick. Since we are breathing, let everything, let everything that have breath. See, this morning I heard the birds chirping. They were breathing. They were praising God. Yeah, that's what they were doing. They were praising God. You can't let certain things hinder your praise. Sometimes. You can wake up on Sunday morning, the sun is shining so bright, God bless you with a good meal, and on your way to church, something can happen that will interrupt your praise. You do know that is a trick of the devil. See, we got to do like David in Psalm 34 and 1. We have to bless the Lord. At all times, then his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I can't bless the Lord at all times. I can't, I can't, his praises cannot be continually in my mouth if I'm complaining, if I'm crying, if I'm tripping, if I'm slipping. We have to learn to no matter what's going on, don't let anything or anybody Hinder your thankful praise. God is worthy. So worthy. Well, what? I got a question. Not really a question. 
guess it's a question. What could hinder us, excuse me, what could stop us from giving God a thankful praise? Here you go. Number one, sin. Sin. Did you know that sin somewhat separates us from God? Um, do you know that along with sin, some of the attributes of sin are, are guilt, shame, fear. It's hard to praise God when you got a guilty conscience. When you know you've done something that he has told you not to do. It's hard. It's like having handcuffs. You want to raise your hand. You want to wave your hand. But you can't because you're shackled. It's like you you, you, you want to run. You want to run, but you got shackles on your feet. You want to dance for God, but you, you can't because you got shackles on your feet. Sin causes guilt, shame, fear, and separation from God. One more thing. I can't, I believe that some people... They, they can't offer God a spiritual praise because they are spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. You remember um, the Valley of the Dry Bones? Do you remember? Let's go. Let's see what James says. James 1. This is what James says about spiritual spirituality. We're talking about spiritual death. Caused by sin. But every man is tempted. This is James 1, 14 through 15. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You may be physically alive but you can be spiritually dead. A dead man, I've never seen a dead man praise God. Okay. Another thing, what would hinder us from giving God a thankful praise? He says sin. Sin brings forth guilt, shame, fear, and death. Also, not knowing God for yourself not having a personal relationship with God, that can hinder your thankful praise. Like I said before, if you don't know him, how can you praise him? How can you worship him? You don't know why you're doing it. You need to, you need to get to know God. You need to get to know God. He already knows you. You need to get to know him. Once you get to know God, you start learning of his ways. You start learning his word. Uh, this word shows you how to live, how to treat people, how to be humble, how to be, uh, and when you need to be, how to be stand tall. Get to know God. Once you get to know God for yourself, I guarantee you, you won't have a problem giving him a thankful praise. One more thing that could hinder us or stop us from giving God a thankful praise. Outside influences. What I mean, I mean, just life. Just life. Sometimes life, so you never know what somebody has gone through all week long. You see them in here, they, they, they might be dressed up, they may have that smile on their face, but you don't really know what they've been through. Things happen on the outside that can hinder us here on the inside. Don't let outside influences Stop you from giving God the thankful praise that he deserves. Amen? Now, I told you a, a few things that will hinder us. So, I'm going to give you three reasons why we should. Or what, give you three reasons on why we should. Or what helps, enables us. Let's say it like that, enables us. Okay? One thing. Verse 5 says, first thing, what is the first thing verse 5 says? For the Lord is good. He's good. 
He's good. Not good like us, because we're not really good. We think we are, but God is good. That should enable you to praise him. Verse 5 also says, his mercy is everlasting. That's another reason, y'all. You say, well, what mercy? What, what, what are you talking about? When I think about the mercy of God, I think about how Jesus Christ, I'm going back there because it's necessary. I think about how Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. See, I should have been on my way to what the Bible calls a lake of fire. But it's because of his mercy that I am on my way home. Second reason, because his mercy lasts forever. Do you know how long forever is? Another reason, another reason, another reason that should, that, that should enable us to give God the thankful praise that he so deserves. His truth endureth. That means it lasts to all generations. So that means this right here, when I'm gone, it's still going to have its power. One day I'm going to have some great-grandchildren. When they're gone, it's still going to have its power. His mercy lasts forever. And his truth endureth to all generations. You got to know God for yourself. You got to know. Do you know God? Do you know God? This, do you know God this morning? Don't, don't fool me. Do you know God? What I was thinking about God, I, I know God. Uh, he's been there with me through thick and thin. When I was running around these, this neighborhood, these neighborhoods over here doing all kind of things, he was with me. When I was putting all kind of toxins in my body, he was with me. When I did things with my body that I should not have done, he was with me. See, those things should make you, make you want to give God a thankful praise. Well, God, he's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at the same time. He's omniscient. That means he knows everything. He's omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful. He's transcendent. That means that he is different and does not depend on his creation. God is self-contained. See, he created, but he himself was not created. He was here already. God is eternal. There's no beginning and ending to God. Before there was, God was here. And after there is, God will still be here. God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God is unchangeable. Hebrews 13 and 8 says the same, yes, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is perfect. He's holy. God is true. He's the Father. He's the Son and the Holy Spirit all wrapped up in the one. God is good. God is love. God is merciful and gracious. He's compassionate. He's patient. He's slow to anger. God is truth. God is faithful. God is just. That's who God is. Not only that, I'm going to tell you one more time before I sit down. God cares so much for us. He knew that we weren't going to be able to do everything that we were supposed to do. John 3.16 said that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him shall not perish. God loved us so much that he knew that our little old dirty offerings and, 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 and sacrifices wasn't going to get it no more. So what he did was he, he, he offered the ultimate sacrifice. This, this sheep that he offered, it didn't have a spot or a blemish. Yes, sir. This sheep that he uh, 
that he that he gave up, that he gave us, his only begotten son name is Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ. The Christ. There were other Jesuses, but there was only one Jesus the Christ. That's why we say Jesus the Christ. God, in his infinite wisdom, hold on, y'all. God, in his infinite wisdom, this is what he did, y'all. This is what he did. Let me turn. I'm going to get there. This is God. Who is God? This is God. God, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were, as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. This is what God did. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I told you we were sheep in this pasture. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned away, turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He, bought, he, brought, he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearer. Yes, it's dumb. So I told you sheep were dumb. And sheep before, uh, sheep before the shearer is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and judgment hall to judgment. Yes, Who shall declare his generation? Yes, All that's saying is that he died. For my sin and your sins. He died. It was on a hill called Calvary. I told you he didn't have any sin. But he took on, took on sin. He had done no wrong. But he died. But he did not stay dead. We know the story. Well, he did not stay dead. Because mm -mm. if he had to stay dead, we wouldn't be here this morning. We wouldn't have a reason to be here this morning. But instead of staying dead on the third day morning. He got up yes, with all power in his hand. That's why, if you don't have any other reason to offer God a thankful praise, thank him for saving your soul. Amen. Would you please stand? The doors of the church is open. You may come by letter. Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. You can come. All you have to do is come right now. Regardless of where you were yesterday, you can come right now. We are sheep. And he is our shepherd. You may come. Tomorrow is not promised. You may come. If you need prayer, there's still plenty of good room. You may come. You may come. For God has open arms like he did the. You may come. may come. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. You still have time. I could go on Don't put out today for tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promise. If God is moving on your inside, and this is your opportunity.
You may be seated. testify and God's greatness. Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, had good fellowship with the family. And then Thursday night into Friday morning, my wife was confused, wasn't coherent, was all night long talking out of her head. Now, I know she have anxiety issues, but this was like anxiety on steroids. So the next morning, I checked, I checked her temperature. It was 104 degrees. So I said, we're going to have to go to the emergency room. So then I said, I'm going to try some Tylenol. I said, I really don't want to have to go to the hospital. So I, I gave her some Tylenol, and about an hour later, <laughs> temperature went down to 102 about 30 minutes later, went to 101. And then it actually went to 98.6, the normal temperature. But the old devil creeped in. About 30 minutes later, it started to rise, 101, 102. And I said, I know what's going to happen. Tonight it's going to be way up there. I'm going to end up having to go to the emergency room late tonight. I said, so we might as well go to the emergency room now. So I grabbed my little hospital to go back. We went to the emergency room. When we got to the emergency room, she was calm. So when we went to uh, check in, they took her to the back, and they poked her with needles about 10 times. I had to get her blood. They got 10 tubes of blood. They did a urine sample. They did a CT scan. And about 30 minutes later, the doctor came back and said, we can't find nothing wrong. <laughs> Look at God. Look at God. That lets you know that God is still in the healing business. And, and I thought about uh, Reverend Cross, Pastor Cross' sermon uh, a week or two ago when he talked about the lepers and how they will heal on the way on to the go way. see the priest. Yeah. She was healed on the way to go see the doctor so that I could have this testimony this morning because somebody may be wavering in their faith and may think that God is not healing anymore. So I'm letting you know he healed her on the way to the emergency room so I could have this testimony this morning and tell you how great God is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I couldn't keep it to myself. God said, tell it. He says, somebody else may be wavering in their faith. But let them know that I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. What I did for the blind man back then. What I did for the lame man back then. I'm doing it today. Don't you think God's not in the healing business today? I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Thank you. God be the glory. He said, while on the way, there's a blessing in being obedient. You know, God changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let's give Reverend Campbell a great big hand of praise for that message. So we're going to bring him up and let him conclude uh, today's service. We hope that the things that you have heard today, that they was pleasing to our sight. We hope that there was something done today that would have you have a closer work with thee. Let's give Reverend Campbell a hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay, I want to, uh, I'm grateful because I have supporters here this morning. People don't have to support you. Uh, so when somebody supports you, they do something for you, you know, you need to appreciate them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't take them for granted. I want to, uh, I got my, my, uh, my beautiful aunt, 
and my handsome uncle, Don Rose, Dolly Rose. Yeah, hey, y'all, you can just wave your hand. I got my uh, my little big cousin sitting over there, Sister Letha. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you. I got my mother and my father sitting there. Man, I'm such a blessed man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got my wife sitting there. I got my grandson sitting there. I just want you to know I appreciate you. I don't take y'all for granted. Thank you. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get out of here. I need to get some sleep. But before I go, I found this in numbers. It's, been, it's a benediction. So we kind of kind of forgot how important a benediction is. You know, a lot of people, they, they leave before the benediction. But do you know there's a blessing in a benediction? Yeah, yeah. Number 6, 24 to 26 says, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. It's in Jesus' name, amen. amen.